No, I did not put my house up as collateral for the purchase of shares of Tesla to win. But if you'll recall, about two weeks ago, I did a video where one of my tribe members did do that, where he informed me that he had uh, gone to the bank the week before and had secured a, a home equity loan on his house to the tune of $300,000, and he was asking me, would it be a safe bet to bet that on Tesla? I told him, first of all, I can't, I can't give you that kind of advice because I'm not a, a licensed financial advisor, and I would not advise you to do that. What I did tell him is that I wouldn't do it with my house. What he did with it relative to his house was up to him, but I would not put my house in jeopardy because that's where I live, and I live there with my wife, and my, my uh, grandchildren come here and sleep in the beds upstairs, so I would not do that, but Frank did, and he did it in such a way that uh, I was not a, a, in approval, but that wasn't important. And, and I think that's an important message to take. I'm no one's financial advisor. I am not licensed in any state to be, and I'm not yours. What I do is I share my information. I share my knowledge, and I share what I do, and I do it based on plans. But let's get back to, to Frank's situation, and let's treat it like it's a horse race, and let's show you exactly what happened over the last two weeks and then I want to solicit from you your reactions to what happened and what you would have done and what you would do at this point. So let's go to the whiteboard. Yes, I have a whiteboard and see exactly what transpired from the 14th of September through Friday. OK, so Frank took his three hundred thousand dollars and on September the 14th, he bought. 787 shares of Tesla at $381 a share. So now what I'm going to do is go through a day-to-day -day scenario of how Frank fared with Tesla. And I want you to think about the ups and downs emotionally that he was dealing with as, as we go through this. So on the 15th, it closed at $436, and Frank was immediately up. $43,285. I believe Frank probably thought, wow, I've really struck it big here, and this is going to get really good. And it got better. The next day, it closed at four forty one, dollars and he made another $4,000. So his, his bet is going good. It's going extremely good. He lost a little. He went down to four twenty three dollars on, what, the 17th? And so he's now at 33,000, but he's still a winner. He's still up over about a little over 10%. 18th, it rebounds back to 442. He's now up to 48,000. He's going for the win. He's at he's on the start of the home stretch and he's he's taking it all the way in. Uh and and his lead even pulls out further. Uh, at 449, he's up to $53,000 on his $300 bet. So he's he's approaching somewhere around 40% now. On the 21st, it drops down uh, to 442, 48,000, but that again is is a nice return. But wait a second. On the 22nd, it drops to 380. He bought it at 381. He's up a buck a share, $778. And then it goes to, so then Friday, it closes at 407. And he's at $20,462. Up. Quite a spread there from uh, a low of $1 up at 787 to 53,000, what a roller coaster ride. And so I guess the question becomes, was this a good bet or wasn't it? Was it, was it worth the emotional roller coaster that Frank went through? And I guess the question I would ask you now is your, if you're Frank, what do you do Monday morning? Or what did you do somewhere through here? 
I know what a lot of you will say. Well, I would I would have sold on what the the eighteenth. I guess that would have been a Friday. I would have sold on Friday. But would you have? I don't know. Well, let's talk about it a little more. Okay, that was Frank's situation. I don't know personally. I do know personally. He got out. He got out. And he did send me a follow-up email. He actually didn't put the full 300000 in, but he did put a substantial share of it in and, uh, and made some money. But the point I think that we need to emphasize is it, if, let's say, we had $300,000 that wasn't tied to our house and we wanted to make a, a bet like that, we believed very strongly in a company, and we believed we had done our homework, and we believed that it was a money-making opportunity. My advice to you then, and what I would do if I did that, would be I would have a plan before I started, a well-thought-out plan. I would study the graphs of and charts of Tesla and see what its volatility range is, what in the past would be the percentage of gain or loss that that Tesla might have in any given period of time. And then I would establish a get in and a get out price, a point at which I would have enough, I'd feel good about it, and I'd take my profits and then reassess the situation and then make a decision accordingly. I'd also have a price at which when it dropped to that price, I would get out. Now, these would be written in stone. There would be no allow, the, 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 the upstairs roommate would have no voice in this. He can scream all he wants, stay with it, stay with it. It's going to come back. It's going to, no, he's not allowed in the game, okay? I make a decision. I write it down on paper. I have get in, out, get, get out price in a, on a high and on a low. And that, under that scenario, without my house being involved, I could see that kind of trade. Now, the other thing I want to emphasize is what I do in my portfolio is my portfolio. The decisions I make are, again, based on the information that I have at the time. I've been criticized in emails and, and comments on the videos that, you suggested buying uh, Amazon at 3300 and I did, and now you sold half of it, uh, and it probably at a loss, and I did, but that's okay. I don't do anything out of fear. I don't do anything out of fear of loss. I do, I make my decisions throughout my life based upon the information that I have at the time and what I think the results are going to be. And in some cases, I hedge my bet and I take some money off the table so that if what I think, and the key word is think, not know, what I think is going to happen, if it happens, I can profit from it. But on the other hand, what I did here, I left half of my holdings in that my original holdings in Amazon, so that if in fact it explodes and goes to five thousand, I'm still a winner. I can I can buy back at at forty eight hundred. This is what I do. This is how I manage my life. This is how I manage my my portfolio. I do nothing out of fear. I do not allow that to come into the equation. I got rid of that roommate. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read my book, uh, Who Are You and Why Are You You? And you'll understand how I just make decisions based on information and then education. I, I, I am more educated about the current stock market than I ever was as a financial advisor because when I was a financial advisor, I was a salesman. My job was to go gather more assets. I did not have the time to read these books and read more books so that I was educated. I am educated now and I make educated decisions. That's what I want you to do. That's what this channel is all about. That's what our discord is all about. It's not all about me. It's a group right now. We're approaching 55,000 
um, who come together at the Discord. And if you want to get into the Discord, you go to bestofusinvestors.com. You will there sign up for my morning letter. My morning letter will come to you um, every morning that the market is open. If you don't see it the day after you sign up and the market is on, uh, uh, open, that means it's in your spam file. I get, I, I get your letter three days later. That's because our system sends, if you don't open it, it sends it again to you three days later. That means you got it, but you didn't find it. It's in your spam file. Move it from your spam file and put it in your primary and you'll get it. We send it. You sign up. The system doesn't have any prejudice or any opinions. You got it. You just didn't find it. So you want to be a part of us, come to bestofusinvestors.com, sign up, get the newsletter, and come to the Discord. Something coming in the Discord is we're going to create a university the best of us investors university. And what we're going to do there is we're going to bring in other talented people, knowledgeable people and teach you things, give you access to a, a video that said that explains the difference between a IRA and a Roth IRA, a SEP, and a so solo 401k. I'll get a lawyer who will explain uh, how you set up a LLC. I'll get a banker that will, explain to you how you set up your checking account. I'll get an accountant who will explain to you how you run your books and what you can deduct and what you can't deduct. Because again, remember one of my premises is it's not how much you make, it's how much you get to keep. And then the beyond that, it's how much you get to pass on to your heirs. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to build family wealth. What I have to do, though, is get, to you, get you to a level that you have all the information that you need to make good, sound decisions. That's what Best of Us Investors is about. I can't do it all through videos on a daily basis, but I can do it through the Discord if I build a university for you. That is in the process of build, being built. Drew and I had a hour and a half conversation yesterday as to how we're going to do it and how we're going to expand it and who all we're going to get into it and the help that we're going to need. We're, we're going to expand our website so that we have more information there. We're actually looking for some a, a tribe member to help us with that. Uh, so if you've got some skills in that area, communicate to, to with me. I have changed my email address. If you're Sending it to the old one, send it to the new one. The new one is carry at bestofusinvestors.com. That way, that email will not be tangled up with all the other emails I get. So if you're emailing me, please make that change. Okay, we're approaching uh, 55,000 uh, subscribers. That's up from 1,000 in the end of January. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, please, if, if you know other people who can benefit from videos like this, share them with you and, or with them, because I, again, this is a complicated business. There's a lot of variables and if you do it right, it can be very rewarding, but you need to have knowledge to do it right. Read the books that you'll find in the description, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the channel. That helps me a bit. And uh, ring the bell so you get notified for every future video. There, I do what all the other YouTubers do. I, I seldom do that. Okay, I'm having a good time. I hope you are as well. Uh, and I think this video with Frank and the, um, the putting his house up, is um, it's, it, it, it was a learning experience for me, and I hope it was for you.